Hey everybody, it's Kristen here. I hope everybody's doing well. So this is something that I really wish I would have put out a long time ago, um, but eh, things have been a little crazy. <laughs> but um, get this out of the way. I guess I can't get it out of the way. <laughs> okay, so um, this is the first time that the Lord ever spoke to me. And this is about, it would have been a year ago in October. Ooh, man, it feels like a lifetime, but it hasn't been. <laughs> So I was at the lowest and darkest place of my life as of yet. It would get much worse. I just had no idea that that was possible. So um, I never ever, when I was really little, it's sad, I had thought about taking my life a couple times just because I was raised in such a really, really abusive environment and super alone. And I didn't know that all the way back then it was a complete spiritual attack. They were trying to take me out from a little kid. And I, of course, had no idea. You know, I just thought my dad was just really mean. Anyway, so, but as an adult, never, ever, like I had struggles and trials. Satan tried to take me out so many times and I would always recover. You know, I would always come up better. My sister used to always say, you're the only person I know that can fall into a bucket of and come out smelling like a rose. And that was all due to God. That was him you know, working every situation for my good and for his glory, no matter what, because I always remained faithful. I always had faith in my, in my, my Lord and Savior, you know, and I always knew that God would get me through. If I got up every day and I did everything I could, he'd do the rest, you know. So then it comes to this point to where, you know, I don't know that we're midway through the tribulation at this point. I don't know that this man that just walked into my life, it seems like Mr. Prince Charming, is Satan himself sent in on a mission to take me out. Um, but he was, and we ended up getting engaged and it was honestly one of the happiest days of my life. I truly loved this person. Like I loved him. And, um, a month later after he got me to move out of my house, killed my dog, all these horrible things. Um, you know, I, it was I had two weeks that I had been living in my car and I had been living in a storage unit in my storage unit. And it was horrible. I, I remember if I had my own business and stuff, I remember I was sitting in my car outside my storage unit trying to make sales calls, just trying to get some sort of income in. I couldn't make a dime. I couldn't make a dime to save my life. The world that I had once fed me no longer fed me anymore. You know, things just, every family member had abandoned me. Every friend I had ever helped wouldn't answer the phone, didn't understand what I was saying. You know, it was horrific, and I didn't know what was going on. It must have been me, right? I must have come to the end of my rope. Like, this must be it. And I remember praying for three days to God, saying, like, just telling him, I just want to come home and hug you. I remember that, like, just saying, I just need a hug. Like, I just need a hug from you. If And I asked him, I said, if, like, I, you know, I'd been praying, and I was just like, if I can't pull out of this, like, I can't spend another day in my car. I can't spend another night in my storage unit. I was 500 miles away from home. I didn't have money to eat. I didn't have anything. And I remember just praying and just wanting a hug from somebody who loved me. And I knew he loved me, but I didn't know why he was silent. He was so silent. And they'd always answered my prayers very quickly. Or at least consoled me. Well, this man had brought me into where I was actually living a life of sin. And it just turned into that. And I never really lived that life of sin. And now I understand that sin separated me. Not from the love of God, but from his presence. And I prayed for three days. And I just said, Lord, if something doesn't change, like if I take my life, do I get to come home to you? Or do I go to hell? Because I hadn't found it biblically. To this day, I still haven't found it biblically. But I had the answer straight from the man himself. And I feel like at this point, especially for persecuted Christians, you need to know. that if you take your life, this is what he says about it. He says, I prayed and I prayed and I prayed. And finally, the next morning, I woke up. I had slept in my car at my storage because it was a place that could lock me in. And I could park underneath a light. At 9 a.m., I remember going to CVS. And I stole two bottles of, of sleeping pills. And I took them. And I had no money. But I was like, I can't do this. Like, I can't do this. And I go to an H-E-B parking lot. This is in Austin, Texas. And I prayed, you know. I'd been praying for three days. Do I get to come home if I take my life? Or do I go to hell? 
Because if I don't get to come home to you, I can't, I can't leave this hell for a worse one. But if I can get out of this, if there's a loophole, please let me take it, you know? Because I was like, you see, like, why aren't you helping me? Like, you see what's happening here? Like, because it was so horrible. And so I kick my seat, I take those pills, I kick my seat back, and I actually forget what I've done for a second. Because they're starting to kick in. I'm starting to kind of, I'm about to lose consciousness. And I remember all of a sudden this voice says, I gave you life. If you take it, you depart from me. And I shut up. And I called 911 and I said, you got to get here. I can't die today. And I remember, I guess I actually got like confrontational. I don't remember because as soon as, by the time they got there, my legs were shaking so bad that um, I passed out shortly after EMTs arrived. But praise the father for doing that. Because that would have been a sacrifice to Satan that he would have. That's what he wanted. And that was a plot. They knew that would happen. And they set it up for that to happen. And I'm just so thankful that the Lord stopped me and said, No, I gave you life. If you take it, you depart from me. I can't help you. So friends, if you are persecuted and if you are, the world is just crapping on you and it is just trampling you underfoot, that is biblical and that's supposed to happen. But know this, stay faithful. Keep going. Cling to the Lord. Pray. Read your Bible. And just stay close to him. And he will bring you through it. And your reward in heaven is great. Can I say that after that things got a lot better? No. They got ten times worse. But I knew, even though there were so many sorceries, I knew that he had a purpose for me. I didn't know what. But I knew that he was real. But that God I'd always served was truly real. And he heard my prayers. And he was watching. And he was there. So just stay faithful. Don't let this world bring you to that level because he's about to return. And just know that if you do kill yourself, you will not go to heaven. And it's not to punish you. It's just he gave you life. If you take it, you depart from him. You make that choice. You use your free will to change his design. So he has a purpose for everyone. Seek that purpose. And I hope that this helps somebody in this time. And I hope that somebody doesn't make that choice. Maybe because they watched this video. But I hope you'll have a wonderful day. And I pray everybody's doing well and everybody's safe. And get ready. He's coming back. Take care. Bye-bye.